By the end of this video, you're gonna have a solid understanding of genotype and phenotype, and you'll be a pro at using the Punnett square for simple crosses. But first, let's define a few terms. When we're talking about genotype, we're talking about the genetic makeup of the organism, the genes. These genes can come in different forms, and we call these forms alleles. Let's take an example of height in pea plants. There are different alleles for height. You can have an allele for tall and you can have an allele for short. Then we have phenotype. A phenotype is the physical expression of those genes. So in our example of height, the phenotype is the actual physical characteristic of tall or short. It's that simple. So the genotype refers to the genetic makeup and the phenotype is how those genes are expressed physically. But how do we get from genotype to phenotype? And can we make predictions of what offspring will look like? Well, to a certain extent, we can, using a simple tool called a Punnett square. A Punnett square is a tool that geneticists use to predict the possible genetic outcomes of a cross between two parents. It was first described in 1905 by the British geneticist Reginald Punnett. This dude named the tool after himself in his book Mendelism. I always wanted to describe something significant and call it something like the Samuel um, thing. Okay, I didn't get that far yet, but let's continue. Anyways, I wanna show you how to use the Samuel square, I mean the Punnett square. <laughs> We're gonna do this by going back to Gregor Mendel's experiment. We're gonna replicate his pea plant experiments conceptually without having to wait for actual pea plants to grow. First, let's look at the possible genotypes and phenotypes related to the height of the pea plant. The capital T allele codes for tallness, and that's a dominant trait with pea plants. And the lowercase t allele codes for shortness, and shortness is a recessive trait. Since each pea plant will have two alleles in the gene for height, one from each parent, the possible genotypes are capital T, capital T, capital T, lowercase, T and lowercase t, lowercase t. Now, I grew up saying big T and little t, so that's what we're gonna use moving forward. Makes it easier to say. But we also have fancier terms to describe this even further. If an organism has two of the same alleles, we call it homozygous. And if it has different alleles, we call it heterozygous. So our options are homozygous dominant with two big T's, heterozygous with a big T, little t, and lastly we have homozygous recessive, little t, little t. Those are the three possible genotypes. What about the phenotypes then? Well, a homozygous dominant pea plant will be tall. A heterozygous pea plant will also be tall since the tall allele is the dominant allele. And a homozygous recessive plant will be short. And that's the only genotype of pea plant that will actually be short because once the dominant allele is present, it's gonna mask the presence of the recessive short allele. Now, for the experiment, let's say we have a tall pea plant and a short pea plant. And for this first experiment, the tall plant has a homozygous dominant genotype. So, big T, big T. And the short plant is homozygous recessive. Little t, little t. We're gonna cross these two plants and this is where the Punnett square comes in handy. We're gonna put one parent's allele on the top of our Punnett square and the other parent's allele on the side here. So at the top, we'll put big T, big T. And on the side, we're gonna have little t, little t for the short plant. Then what we're gonna do is we'll fill in each box of the Punnett square with the alleles from the corresponding rows and column. So we'll pull the big T's down and the little T's over. This is then gonna give us all of the possible genotypes that the offspring of these two plants could have. So as we can see, the resulting offspring will all be heterozygous, big T, little t. And what will the phenotype of this F1 generation be? Well, they'll all be tall. And yes, that's exactly what Mendel observed. So far, so good. Well, let's do exactly what Mendel did. He continued on and crossed the F1 generation. So let's make a new Punnett square and put the parents on the top and the left. Since all of the F1 generation plants were heterozygous, we'll put big T, little t in both spots. And once again, let's fill in all the options. Bring down the allele options from the parent at the top and bring over the allele options from the parent on the side. And when we look at the resulting options, we see that one out of the four offspring will be homozygous dominant, big T, big T. Two out of the four will be heterozygous, big T, little t. 
and one out of the four will be homozygous recessive. Little t, little t. Another way of saying this is that 25% of the offspring will be homozygous dominant, 50% will be heterozygous, and 25% will be homozygous recessive. Now, what does this mean for phenotype? Well, again, the allele for tall is dominant. So once that's present, the plant will be tall. So basically in this situation, the offspring has a three out of four chance or a 75% chance of being tall and one out of every four or 25% will be short. That's what we'd expect. And guess what? That's exactly what Mendel observed and described. Man, I don't know about you, but I'm just fascinated by the fact that we can use a simple tool like the Punnett square to make pretty accurate predictions about the genotypes and phenotypes of offspring. Now in this video, we looked at very simple crosses that were looking at just one trait, like height. We call these monohybrid crosses. In the next video, we're gonna look at a more complex kind of cross, the dihybrid cross. My name is Leslie Samuel from Interactive Biology, where we're making biology fun. That's it for this video, and I'll see you in the next one.